power of none. N-U-N. Now, before I get started, I want to specify two things. One, a nun is also a sister, so I might reference them as a sister during this talk. Two, this talk, it has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with global impact and human rights. It's about taking technology, putting it in the hands of the nuns to change the trajectory of the world for the betterment of all. So you guys are probably thinking, are there nuns still around, right? There are. There are a lot. Does anybody want to guess how many? There are 650,000 nuns around the world. 650,000 nuns. They are in 190 different countries. Blown away when I heard this information. I had no idea. I grew up in the church. I went through my sacraments. I raised three boys in the church, and they went through their sacraments, and I had no idea. As a matter of fact, the only nun I knew was my cousin, Sister Patty. So what do these nuns do, right? Or why don't we know about them? I, I had three theories. One, obviously, the church. They do not talk about the nuns, right? And the nuns don't hold any key positions in the church. As a matter of fact, the nuns, they are the ones that are out in the world openly serving others, right? As a matter of fact, the church does not even financially support the nuns. Second, nuns, they are humble to a fault. They do not want recognition for the incredible work that they are doing. They simply feel success when they see somebody that they help that's doing well. Lastly, in the 60s, the Second Vatican Council suggested that the nuns look like the people they were serving. That's Sister Judy. Would you have known she's a nun? She is at an anti-human trafficking demonstration. But so what do these women do? First off, right, they take a vow of poverty. I couldn't have done that, but they do that. Second, they are fierce advocates for social justice. They do not care what somebody's race is or what their religious beliefs are. They love without distinction. And these women, they're educated, highly educated women. Most of them have multiple degrees. And these professional women, they're educators, they're administrators, they're doctors, they're nurses, they're lawyers. And you know what these women do? They move into those communities struggling the most. They move in to hear from the people what is causing the poverty around them. They're looking for the who, the what, the why of this injustice. They won't move into a community just to put a Band-Aid on the problem. They want to create systemic change. They want to rise these people out of the poverty that they live in. And this poverty, it can be caused by many different things. It can be from a war. It can be from domestic violence. It could be gender inequality, lack of education, lack of job skills training. But what these women do is they are giving dignity to those that are most marginalized. They're giving them life-changing skills. They are putting smiles on the most vulnerable. Day or night, 24-7, you can find a nun at work. In a time when we have traffickers, and we have gang violence, and we have inequality and wars, we need these brave women. They are the largest movement of women for good the world has ever known. And I'm going to repeat that. The largest movement of women for good the world has ever known. So, in the United States, nuns have been around since the 1700s. To give you an example of what was going on, in the 1700s, we still not know, did not know about viruses or germs or bacteria. So when people drank water, they sometimes got sick. But as a society, we put a lot of energy and time and resources into water. And now, almost 99% of the people in the, or actually over 99% of the people in the United States have safe drinking water. What if we were able to give the same time and energy and resources and technology to the nuns' work? Would we have 27.6 million people affected by trafficking every year? Would we have 700 million people dealing with domestic violence? Could we possibly have more than just 14 countries that have full legal protection of women? In 2017, there was a nun, Sister Irene, that started a nonprofit called Sisters Rising Worldwide. 
Her idea was to go ahead and connect the technology with the nuns and kind of get them all on this network. Because at the time, the sisters' congregations were siloed. So that, what that means is like if a nun was out in the world and she was doing some work and she wanted to find out if there were any other nuns in the area, she couldn't, she couldn't find out if there were any other nuns from any other congregations. It's kind of like running a business. Could you imagine? There is a company, and they have branch offices across the United States. And those offices, they couldn't share resources. They couldn't share successes and failures of the other branches. As a matter of fact, they couldn't even pick up the phone and call one of their peers. They wouldn't be successful, right? So Sister Irene was onto something. She was going to build this network of nuns, all doing really important work, and she was going to have them collaborate together, right? And then she was going to share their stories with the world. And she thought she can change the trajectory of the world, right? She can bring the light to what's going on. She ran into one problem. She could not find the right person to partner with on this technology piece. That is where one of my blood sisters and I get involved. My cousin, Sister Patty, reached out to us and said, hey, will you guys fly to St. Paul, Minnesota and talk to Sister Irene? I said, sure. So my sister and I go out there. My sister, she's brilliant. She went ahead and was tasked with developing this technology platform. So like what it would look like, how it would feel, how it would operate. And there had to be five key areas. There had to be an area where the nuns would be able to talk to each other. So she had to break down the language barrier between them. Two, their place for them to go ahead and let us know what was going on in their communities. Three, there had to be a, a where they can post like best practices and some kind of like important information where other nuns would be able to access that information. Uh, four, if there was a crisis, the nuns had to be able to get information out quickly. Fifth, if the nun needed help fundraising for a program, they could fill out a document that would say what the situation is, what their response to that situation is, how many funds they needed, what those funds would be used for, and what systemic impact were they going to create in their community. I was tasked with understanding everything my sister was putting together. I had to go know the ins and outs because I was going to be going ahead presenting this technology piece for Sister Irene at one of her upcoming meetings. Well, after I did the presentation, I was hooked. I wanted to see Sisters Rising Worldwide get off the ground. There were a couple of reasons why. One, a, I, I was recently retired, so I had the bandwidth to do it. Two, I believed in the technology. I understood what Sister Irene was trying to create. And three, I was thinking to myself very silently, saying, we need a central database with all the information of what the nuns are doing. I mean, I could imagine what the world would look like if we didn't have nuns and didn't document their work. See, the number of nuns in the Northern Hemisphere is on the decline. Number three, I spent that month with Sister Irene preparing for the presentation, and I met other nuns. And let me tell you, they are fun. You may not think it's true, but they're really, really fun. And their joy and their love and their laughter, it's just contagious. You want to be around the nuns. And they're even a little feisty. They are willing to have the difficult conversations with corporations and the cartel if needed. Right? They are powerful women doing powerful work, and I wanted to be a part of it. So five years ago, I started volunteering for Sisters Rising Worldwide. And the first three years, uh, Sister Irene and I were able to raise the money and build the technology platform. And in the last two years, I'm proud to say we have 139 nuns on the platform. They are from 19 different countries and 60 different congregations. In 2022, the nuns with that support of Sisters Rising Worldwide was able to go ahead and help 100,000 people last year. Sister uh, Anita, one of the first nuns we helped, she runs a school, right? But in the rural area, she knew that some of the um, girls were no longer, like, allowed to go to school. And she knew that made them very vulnerable for trafficking, right? So Sister Anita brought them down to her school, and she housed them, and she fed them, and she educated them in one of four different trades. But Sister Anita reaches out to us and says, I need some help. If I'm able to buy a van, I am going to be able to help more girls that are subject to trafficking, right? They're vulnerable. And so that is the van that Sisters Rising Worldwide helped Sister Anita buy. The reason she needed that van was because more internships 
And the more students they had, the more internships these kids had to get to. And the best thing is, is these girls, they don't stay in the city with the school. They go back home. And they take the skills that they learned and they bring it back to help their community. Sister Florence, there was a militia that came in and killed all the farmers. So the women and the kids, they fled into the city. And Sister Florence was helping them. But these kids, they wanted to go back to the farm. See, the community was running out of food. There were no more farmers. Sister Florence is like, mm -mm, bad idea, right? It is not safe. So Sister Florence reached out to us. We connected her with a master gardener out of Minnesota who knew about vertical gardening. And so together they developed a vertical garden. And then we reached out to one of our donors and said, would you please fund this for Sister Florence? And he did. So Sister Florence built a vertical garden. The kids are now growing multiple crops at this vertical garden and they are selling it at the market and feeding their community. And the best thing is other nuns have reached out to Sister Florence about this vertical garden. And now she's training them on how to vertical garden. Ukraine, mm. we can go on and on about the stories of the nuns and what they did or, and still doing. We worked with nuns from the countries all in that area, right? And they were telling the stories of how they were housing people. And if they didn't have space, they were finding housing and they were feeding them and they were clothing them and they were educating the kids and they were even train, train, or, uh, training women to get skills so they could get jobs in these new countries, right? I mean, they were just doing incredible work. This nun, she's from Poland. She was driving to the border nine times a day, bringing food. Yeah, I mean, I could go on and on with the stories about the nuns, but I would tell you this, if you asked any one of those nuns, what they thought about Sisters Rising Worldwide and the technology, they would tell you, it's too good to be true. They are forever grateful for what we've been able to do. So what if we were able to get all 650,000 nuns on the platform? What if the media cared less about what a movie star had for breakfast, but cared more about sharing these stories of hope and the goodness that's going on what if social media influencers cared, la um, cared less about the latest, you know, fashion trends, but cared about maybe telling a story of an individual that has been risen out of poverty because of the help of a nun? So what if the media and people stopped caring about clicks and likes and cared more about human rights? Right? Somebody once told me they didn't believe in God, but they believe in the nuns. I truly feel that with media and people, sharing the stories of the sisters that everybody from all different backgrounds could get behind their work. They could join this movement so all may flourish. I'm going to leave you with this one last thought. When my kids were too young to understand what white blood cells were, I would tell them they had soldiers in their body. So when they had a cut, the soldiers would go to the cut and they would heal them from the inside. I feel that's what the nuns do. They are going to those areas that are so devastating, and they're hurting, and they are healing them. The nuns are the white blood cells of the world. They are building a global immunity against injustice. Thank you for your time.